Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to another card video. This week I did a little peekaboo window card. So I have three different windows that the um, recipient of the card can put their finger in that little notch and lift it up. And I used the Furry Folk stamp set, which is new for Stampin' Up! this year, and some Copic markers. So I'm going to start with my background and I'm going to use chocolate chip ink on chocolate chip paper using the wood grain background stamp. Now I'm punching three one and three eighths inch squares. I'm going to measure the center and then I'm using these squares as templates. So I'm just going to trace around them. I'm going to do all three. I've got a scoring blade in my cutter right now and I'm going to score the left side of each one of those squares. There's a little notch in the middle of that blade and that's how I tell how far down I'm going. And So this is my cutting blade and I'm going to cut down the right hand side. And then finally I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut each one of the other sides. I'm just going to erase my pencil marks. I tried using an X-Acto knife the first go round of this card and it didn't come out very straight. Now I'm not sur sure what size this circle is but it's too small so I went back in later on in the video with a half inch circle punch. It was much better. This is a, I think it's called Little Leaves Sizzlet and I used old olive paper to cut it out in my Big Shot and then I used my sponge dauber to ink it up with some old olive ink and then just a two-way glue pen to adhere it to the card. Then I'm just going to trim off the excess. I've got this piece of Nina Solar White cardstock and I just put it underneath and then I traced my square so I knew exactly where I needed to stamp my animals. And I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to use Copic markers. And I'm going to erase my pencil lines first because I found that whenever I apply ink, which I'm going to do with a sponge dauber here, just kind of soften it up a little bit. Um, I can't get the pencil marks off. They don't erase after you ink it up. So that's why I did that first. Alright, so I'm going to show you just one animal for now. I'll show another one later. But I'm going to do the rabbit, which I'm using W1, W3, and W5. So this is W1, which is the lightest color. I'm just going to do all over. And then I'm going to take my W5, which is the darkest. And my light is coming from the right hand side. So I'm going to darken the left. And then my medium, which is W3, I blend that into the light and then I use my um, medium to do the shadow on the right hand side because it's not going to be quite as dark. And then I'm going back in with my W1, the lightest one, and blending it all together. Now some people go from light to medium to dark and I go straight from light to dark. Um, and the reason I do that is because I, I don't want to put too many layers of ink on there because then it just starts to all fade into one color. Okay, so I'm using dimensionals to put this on and the reason why is it kind of gives me a little bit of space to push that window in. Um, the first time I did it, um, it was just, it was all flat and so it wasn't staying in there. So I actually used my own handwriting in pencil and then I went back over it with um, a black Stampin' Up! marker. Okay, so now I'm doing this group thing here and I'm going to stamp the three animals that are going to be in the front and I'm going to use my stamp -a jig because I want it to be pretty exact. So I've got my bunny, my mouse, and my chipmunk. Again, this is Nina Solar White Cardstock. This is Eclipse Masking Tape. I'm going to stamp all my animals on there and then I'm going to cut them each out. This is like a giant post-it note. Now I'm going to cover up the bunny, I'm going to cover up the mouse, and then I'm going to cover up the chipmunk because 
um, the next animals are going to be standing behind those animals. So I've got my raccoon first. And the masking tape is thin enough to where you don't have any issues with a gap between um, the animals. All right, now I'm gonna put my mask on those animals. So I have a little bit more stamping to do. I'm gonna do the owl now. And then I'm gonna cover that up. And finally, I'm gonna do some trees and the trees are gonna be behind all the animals. And I'm using Old Olive Ink. Again, my stamp -a jig. Now when I, when I stamp this down, because now at this point I've got a couple of layers of the masking tape, I'm going to get a gap between the paper and um, the animals. Does that make sense? <laughs> See all those white spots? is because there's just kind of a thick layer of tape. So um, this is really easy to solve. I just took a blender pen and I pulled some ink off my stamp -a jig and I just went in there and I blended it in. Actually came out pretty good. Now I'm going to peel everything away. And there you have it. I slowed it down so you can see. Alright, I'm going to show you, um, sorry it got a little darker there. Um, I forgot to turn my little light on, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to just show you how to do this one animal and the reason why is because I created a little neck for him so it gave a little bit more dimension for his head and I want to show you how to do that so I'm using um, E21 which is my lightest color again all over and then I'm going to take E34 and um, that's going to be my darkest and again all on the left hand side because my light is coming from the right you're going to get a little shadow from the mouse's ear. You're going to get a little shadow from the mouse's hand, arm, <laughs> and then underneath. And then you'll see I'm going to add a little bit of shadow because his arm is kind of coming in front of him. And that's going to cast a little bit of a shadow. I'm blending in with E25, which is my medium color. And then E25, the medium, is what I'm going to use to do the shadow on the right-hand side so it's not quite as dark as the shadow on the left. Now back in with my lightest color of E21. Okay, so this is where I'm going to add the neck. So I'm going to take my um, medium color, which is E25. And I'm going to kind of do the bottom of his face. And then I take my lighter color and I kind of feather it up and around. And then I'm going to take my darkest one, which is E34, go in there just a little bit more and then blend it out again with the lightest. You kind of have to play with it just a little bit, but you just want a little shadow. And then I'm going to go in with my colorless blender and that's going to remove color. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of color from his face, which kind of makes his face kind of pop up a little. Now I'm adding grass. Now I don't know if you noticed, but I'm wearing like three different shirts in this video. <laughs> and that's because it took me three days because I'm so busy. I just, it just took me three days to finish it up. All right, now I've got my Spellbinders Labels 11 and I'm using my masking tape to hold my die in place while I run it through my Big Shot. This is some brushed corduroy distress ink and my sponge dauber. I'm just going to ink up the edges so it kind of creates a definition since I'm going to be putting it on the inside of the card. And then finally, happy birthday to you is the last word. 
Now here I am going back with that bigger circle because I couldn't get my finger in it the first time. Okay, I'm just adhering that in there. And then this time I just need, I'm just going to lay it flat in there. I don't need any foam in between. Okay, here's how I show how it works. See, my finger comes in there. Happy birthday to... And then, yep. But that's not all, actually. This is what I usually do at the end. But then I decided that the animals need to be a little bit more festive. So um, I was going to add some hats, but I didn't have a hat that was small enough for these animals. So I just decided to add a balloon. So um, this is from the Owl Together Now stamp set, which is actually discontinued or retired. And um, I stamped it twice, once on Nina cardstock, and then I used Copic markers and pink to color it in. And then I'm just going to pop that balloon up on a dimensional. And then that's it. So, hope you enjoyed it. I have more detail on my blog as far as technique and um, the numbers of the Copic markers that I used. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.